Well, thank you. Thank you. I am, um, I was not expecting this much company. Um, I'm going to have to rearrange some things. <laughs> um, indeed, um, <clears throat> Keith has told you that um, we worked together at Ligonier, and indeed we did. Um, my name is Anthony Carter. People call me Tony. I am the lead pastor of East Point Church in East Point, Georgia. And like most of you, <clears throat> I have been a long-time long student of Ligonier Ministries and Dr. Sproul. And in fact, as Keith has told you, it was my privilege for many years to, to even work at Ligonier and to work this conference for many years. One of the privileges I had at working at Ligonier was that I got to know Dr. Sproul and Occasionally, Dr. Sproul would come by the, my desk and ask how I'm doing. And I remember one time he came by the desk and we began talking. We would talk about golf and, and things like that. And he said, um, Tiger? He called me Tiger. I don't know why he called me Tiger. <laughs> he said, Tiger, how's your golf game? And I said, well, you know, it's not doing too well. Back then, it really wasn't much to speak of at all. And um, he said, you know, if you're not breaking 80, you're neglecting your game. But if you're breaking 80, you're neglecting your work. <laughs> well, I tell Dr. Sproul that if that is the standard, then he would be pleased to know that I have not been neglecting my work. <laughs> In fact, evidence of that is this book that is, I am pleased to share with you this, this evening. With that in mind, I want to begin by telling you a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in rural Michigan. No, not Detroit, I said rural Michigan. About an hour, hour and a half north of Grand Rapids. A small community, rural community, amongst the lakes and the natural forests and the cornfields of that part of Michigan. In fact, my mother still lives on the same dirt road on which I played as a boy. It was a small town. It was a simple town. We were simple people. We lived simply and we worshiped simply. We attended the small Baptist church uh, just a few blocks away from our home that we often walked to when the weather permitted. It was a simple little church and we worshiped simply, except on the first Sunday of each month. For the first Sunday of each month was the Sunday in which we celebrated the Lord's Supper. And that which was simp simple now became a little more ceremonial. The preacher on that Sunday, if normally he wore a, a black robe, on this Sunday he came in a white robe. The older ladies would come in the church, we called them mothers, and they would dress in all white and white hats. The communion table, which for most Sundays was just a bare table, on this Sunday it would be draped in a white cloth, and underneath it you could see the elements of the bread and the wine. And after the preacher had preached the sermon, he'd come down from the pulpit and stand behind the communion table and begin to bless the elements to the congregation. And after speaking a word over the elements, the deacons would come forth and they would begin to serve the Lord's table to the congregation. And I distinctly remember that every First Sunday, without fail, after we celebrated the Lord's Supper, someone would raise a song. It would be the same song every Lord's Day when we celebrated the Lord's Supper. 
I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Heard Adrian Rogers say one time, <laughs> I heard Adrian Rogers say one time, I can carry a tune, I just can't drop it off. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Reminded me back then, at the center of it all, was the blood of Jesus. It reminded me it was the blood then. It reminds me that it is the blood now. I remind it that the center of who we are as Christians is this precious substance that the Bible refers to as the blood of Christ. And that it is in the blood and through the blood. And everything that we have as Christians in our salvation is brought to us. And yet it is not just the blood per se. It is not just simply the red substance that was running through Jesus' veins. But more importantly, it's what his blood symbolized. It symbolized his life being poured out unto death for us. Stephen Charnock, the 17th century Puritan, in his treaties, a discourse of the cleansing virtue of Christ's blood, gave this definition when he spoke of the blood of Christ. By this is meant, he says, the last act in the tragedy of his life, his blood being the ransom of our souls, the price of our redemption, and the expiation of our sin. The shedding of his blood was the highest and most excellent part of his obedience. His whole life was continual suffering, but his death was the top and complement of his obedience. For in that he manifested the greatest love to God and the highest charity to man. The blood of Christ symbolizes his life being poured out unto death, even death on the cross. And this is the Bible's preferred way of referring to the means in which the benefits of Christ's death come to us. It's the Bible's preferred way of referring to it through the blood. Consider this, as one writer has said, that the blood of Christ is mentioned in the writings of the New Testament nearly three times as often as the cross of Christ, and five times as frequently as the death of Christ. And while each of those are referring to the, to the same thing in, in substance, notice that the writers of the New Testament, their, their, their preferable way of referring to the life and death of Christ poured out for us and the means by which the benefits of that death come to us is the blood of Jesus. If the history of redemption is a story told in pictures, then the blood of Jesus is the paint with which that story is told.
Listen to how the Bible speaks of the effectual blood of Jesus in accomplishing our salvation. Listen. First, it tells us that we have the new covenant in his blood. Luke chapter 22 and verse 20. And likewise, Jesus says, the cup after he had eaten, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. We have been purchased by his blood. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Paul tells the elders in Ephesus upon his departure, be care uh, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God which he obtained or purchased with his own blood. He is our propitiation by his blood. Romans Chapter 3, beginning in verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. We have been justified by his blood. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. We have redemption through his blood. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. We have been brought near by his blood. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We have peace through his blood. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. We have our consciousness purified by his blood. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? By his blood. We have been sanctified through his blood. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. We are ransomed by his blood. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. We are elect according to the blood. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, it tells us that we are God's elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in the sanctification of the Spirit for the obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. We have been cleansed from all our sins by his blood. 1 John Chapter 1 and verse 7. But if we walk in the light, he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We are free from sin by his blood. 
from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, it says in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Over and over and over again, the writers of the New Testament press upon us the efficacious work of the blood of Christ in accomplishing the blessings that are inherent in the salvation of his people. And with so many references to the blood of Jesus, is there any wondering that so many of the songs and the hymns of the church have related to the blood of Christ? William Cooper, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Where sinners plunge beneath its flood, lose all their guilt. Be stained. How about Charles Wesley? And can it be that I should gain an entrance in my Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is that flow that makes us white as snow. No other help I know. Nothing, nothing but the blood. Jesus. This was pressed upon me. The truths of these texts were pressed upon me as I was doing a sermon series through the book of Hebrews. And just came across the sacrificial work of Christ as the Lamb of God, the superior Lamb of God, the once and for all sacrifice of God. And I began to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and to discover the glorious truths that come to us, the glorious blessings that are ours, that, are, that come to us by way of the blood of Christ, meaning his poured out life and death for us as people unto salvation. And therefore, in this, in this book, with, with Bible verse and quite a few songs, I have tried with brevity and clarity to point you to the truth that there are these inexhaustible riches to be discovered in the life and the death of Christ for us. I have sought to whet your appetite for the truth of God's Word, not only in the songs that we sing, and yes, we should sing them, but even more importantly in the lives that we live and offer up as worship to God. It'll be rooted and grounded in the person and the work of Christ, in the blood in the sacrificial Lamb of God. The book begins with a story about a precious young girl who suffered through leukemia. And from her need of a bone marrow transplant and to our need of a heart transformation, I learned this all-important truth that the Bible tells us over and over again, that life really is in the blood. 
It's in the, temporally in the blood that is running through our veins. But eternally, Eternally, it is to be found in the sin-breaking, guilt-removing, incomparable, inestimably valuable blood of the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. So I pray, I, I hope, I, I encourage you to read it. The Bible says, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, so that you know that your work is not in vain in the Lord. Well, if you would read this book and tell me about it, then I know my work hasn't been in vain. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but more importantly than that, I pray that you would read it and get a greater appreciation for the next time you sing. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. And next time you hear somebody say, oh, how precious is the flow that makes us white as snow. Or perhaps, if nothing else, you will go away from here this evening humming. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. For indeed it is, beloved. He shed his blood for you, for you. And you know what? His blood works. It still works. Thank you.